this video, I'm going to show you how to solve 5 osmolarity calculations questions and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Damkwa and if this is your first time here and you'd like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So the questions in this video are from our NAPLES Calculations Question Bank. This question bank is the largest pharmaceutical calculations question bank on the planet. Now if you'd like to check it out, I'm going to put a link to it in the description. Also, if you'd like to expand your understanding of osmolarity calculations, we have so many videos on the channel and I'm going to put a link to a playlist in the description as well. So let's get right to it. This question says, a solution contains 312 milligrams of potassium ion per 200 milliliters. How many milliosmoles are represented in a liter of the solution? Round to the nearest whole number, do not include units. So in this question, the goal is to calculate the milliosmoles present in one liter of the solution. Now this is another way to say you need to calculate the osmolarity of the solution. And so the way we want to approach this question is actually to use the osmolarity equation. And the equation states that milliosmoles per liter is equal to the concentration of the substance in grams per liter divided by the molecular weight times the number of species times a thousand. Now the concentration of the substance is always in grams per liter. That's important. So we're going to start off with that and we're going to make use of the information in the question which states that we have 312 milligrams of potassium ion per 200 milliliters. We're going to scale that up from 200 milliliters to the amount in a thousand milliliters which is essentially a liter. So we're going to say 312 milligrams. We want to convert that to grams and so we're going to multiply this by the conversion factor that a thousand milligrams is actually equal to one gram the milligrams cancel out and this is going to be equal to 0 0.312 grams. So that implies that you have 0 0.312 grams of potassium ion in 200 milliliters of the solution. We want to determine the amount in grams that is present in a liter. Now a liter is a thousand milliliters. So we go ahead and solve for x which is the unknown. That would imply that x is going to be equal to 0 0.312 grams times a thousand milliliters divided by 200 milliliters the milliliters cancel out and that's going to be equal to 1.56 grams so you're going to have 1.56 grams of the potassium ion in a thousand milliliters or in a liter of solution now the molecular weight of potassium is actually given us 39 so we're going to note that it's going to be 39 it's actually grams per mole which is the units you want and so in terms of species, there's only one entity in there. It's only one particle that's a potassium ion. So your species is going to be equal to one. So the number of species is going to be equal to one. So we can now substitute all this information into the equation here. And that would imply that your milliosmoles per liter is going to be equal to the 1.56 divided by the 39, which is the molecular weight, times the number of species, which is 1, times 1,000. And that's going to be equal to 40. Now, the question says round your nearest whole number. Do not include units. 40 is already a whole number. We did not include the units here. So the answer is going to be equal to 40. This question says, calculate the osmolarity of 2 liters of D5 half normal saline intravenous solution. Round to the nearest whole number. Do not include units. So in this question, the objective is to determine the osmolarity of the D5 half normal saline solution. And so the way we want to proceed is to start off with the osmolarity calculations equation. And the equation states that milliosmoles per liter is equal to concentration of substance in grams per liter divided by the molecular weight times number of species times a thousand. Now it's important to know that in this preparation you have two components. You have dextrose which is 5% concentration and then you have a half normal saline. So we are going to use this equation twice 
one time for the dextrose 5% and the other time for the half normal saline and because osmolarity is a colligative property they're going to add those osmolarities at the end so we're going to start off with the dextrose 5% and what we want to do is to basically determine the amount that goes in the numerator here so since it is a 5% solution, that would imply that for the dextrose 5%, what you have is 5 grams over 100 milliliters. But notice it needs to be in grams per liter. So we determine the quantity in grams that to be present in 1 liter. Now 1 liter is 1,000 milliliters. And so we can go ahead and solve for x. x is going to be equal to 5 grams times 1,000 milliliters divided by 100 milliliters. The milliliters cancels out. You have a few zeros cancel out. And this is going to be equal to 50 grams per liter. Now, there's a useful trick. Anytime you have a percentage, you simply can move the decimal one place to the right. And that will give you the value that goes in here. So for a 5% dextrose, we just move the decimal one place to the right. And that will be 50. And then you can put the 50 here. But then if you want to go through the entire process, this is how you want to do it. Now, the next thing that we actually need is the molecular weight. So the molecular weight of dextrose is actually equal to 180 grams per mole. And the other piece of information we need is the number of species. Now, because dextrose is a non-electrolyte, it doesn't dissociate. And so the number of species here, also known as the number of particles, is going to be equal to 1. And so now we have all the information that we need to substitute into the equation. And so that would imply that your osmolarity, which is milliosmoles per liter, is going to be equal to 50, which is from here, divided by a molecular weight, which is 180, times the number of species, which is 1, times 1,000. And that's going to be equal to 277.8. Now, the next thing we need to do is determine the osmolarity for the half normal saline. So that would be this portion of it. So when you talk about half normal saline, that actually implies that you have 0.45%. So when you have 0.45%, then that would imply that you have 0.45 grams of sodium chloride in 100 milliliters of solution. We want to determine the number of grams that is present in a liter. Now a liter is a thousand milliliters. And so here, Y is going to be equal to 0.45 grams times a thousand milliliters divided by 100 milliliters. The milliliters cancel out, the zeros also cancel out. And now you have 4.5 grams in a liter. So you could go through this entire process, or if you want a nifty trick, once again, you simply will move the decimal one place to the right, and that will be instead of 0.45, you now have 4.5 grams in the liter. So we know the concentration or the value that goes in the numerator here. What we need is the molecular weight and then the number of species. So here, the molecular weight of sodium chloride is actually equal to 58.44 gram per mole. So for the number of species, now the sodium chloride dissociates into a sodium cation and a chloride anion. So you have one cation, one anion, and so your number of species is going to be equal to two. So now we can substitute all these values into the original equation. And that would imply that your milliosmoles per liter is equal to 4.5, which is from here divided by the molecular weight, which is 58.44, times the number of species, which is 2, times 1,000, and that's going to be equal to 154. And so now the total osmolarity is going to be equal to the osmolarity we calculated from the dextrose 5%, which was the 277.8, and the osmolarity that we calculated for the half normal saline, which is 154. So we are going to have 277.8, plus 154 and that's going to be equal to 431.8 now the question says round to the nearest whole number do not include units and so the answer is going to be equal to 432 this question says a solution of sodium chloride contains 39 milli equivalents per liter Calculate its osmolar strength in terms of milliosmoles per liter. Assume complete dissociation. Round to the nearest whole number. Do not include units. So in this question, the goal is to calculate the osmolar strength in terms of milliosmoles per liter, which essentially is telling us to calculate the osmolarity of the preparation. And you've been given concentration in milliequivalents per liter. So a smart and elegant way to solve this question is actually to recall the fundamental equations associated with milliequivalents and milliosmoles. 
And so for milli equivalence, the milli equivalence is equal to millimoles times valence. And then for milliosmoles, milliosmoles is equal to millimole times number of species or number of particles. So you'll notice that millimoles is common in both instances. Now, if you divide both sides of the equation here by liters and liters, then you end up with a milli equivalent per liter here. So we can do the same thing with the milliosmoles. If we divide the milliosmoles by liter and then the right hand side by liter, we notice that milliosmoles per liter is actually our osmolarity. So in both instances, the millimole per liter is a common term. So millimole per liter is a common term in both equations. So what we can do is since we have milli equivalence per liter, what we want to do is actually make the millimoles per liter here the subject of the equation. Now that would imply that you have millimole per liter being equal to milli equivalence per liter divided by valence. Now, this is significant because we can actually substitute this equation right here into this one. So wherever we see millimole per liter, we're going to put this right hand side of the equation and then that will give us a derivative of the actual equation. So let's make things a little bit simpler by actually naming the equation. So this is equation one, equation two, and equation three. So we are going to substitute equation two into equation three. And what that would look like then is now your milliosmoles per liter is going to be equal to milli equivalents per liter divided by valence times number of species so now what we need is we already have the milli equivalence per liter which is given as 39 we need the valence and we need the species now you're going to get all of those by how sodium chloride dissociates in water so when you have sodium chloride and it's in water or an aqueous environment it's going to dissociate into a sodium cation and a chloride anion so when you talk about valence, the valence is going to be the absolute charge on either the cation or the anion. So if you're using the cation, it's going to be the absolute of positive 1. Absolute value of positive 1 is 1. Or if you decided to use the anion here, which is chloride, it's going to be the absolute value of negative 1. Absolute of negative 1 is also 1. So the valence of sodium chloride is going to be equal to 1. So for the number of species where sodium chloride dissociates, you have one sodium cation, one chloride anion. So your number of species here is going to be equal to two. So number of species or number of particles, as it's sometimes called, is going to be equal to two. So now we have all the information that we need to use this equation, and we are going to substitute those values in there. So what that would look like then is you have milliosmoles per liter being equal to milli equivalents per liter the value is 39 so we're going to put 39 divided by the valence valence is one so divided by one times the number of species and number of species is two now the question says round to your nearest whole number do not include units so the answer is going to be equal to 78. This question says, calculate the osmolar strength of a potassium gluconate solution with molecular weight 234 containing 2.5 milli equivalents in each 100 milliliters. Round to the nearest whole number, do not include units. Now in this question, the goal is to calculate the osmolar strength, which is another way of saying calculate the osmolarity or calculate the milliosmoles per liter of potassium gluconate solution containing 2.5 milli equivalents in each 100 milliliters. So an elegant way to solve this question is to recall the equation for determining milliosmoles. So milliosmoles is going to be equal to millimole times the number of species. Now, since we are looking for the osmolar strength, which essentially is osmolarity, which is the same as milliosmoles per liter, we can divide both sides of the equation by a liter. So if you divide the left-hand side by a liter, you end up with your osmolar strength or osmolarity. And if you divide the right-hand side by a liter, you've not changed the equation at all. So now you have milliosmoles per liter being equal to millimoles per liter times the number of species. Now in the question, what you've been given actually is milli equivalence. So we want to determine is there a relationship between milli equivalence and milliosmoles. And the way we want to proceed is to start off with the equation for determining milli equivalence. Now, milli equivalence is actually equal to millimole times valence. And what we can do here is divide both sides of the equation by a liter. So you have milli equivalence per liter and then you have millimoles per liter. So the equation has not changed essentially, but you have a different version of it. Now, why this is important is you notice that you have millimoles per liter in the equation here, and you also have millimoles per liter for the milliosmoles per liter version. So what we can do is anywhere we see millimoles per liter, we can substitute the expression from the milli equivalence section into that. And what that actually looks like then is millimoles per liter is equal to milli equivalence per liter divided by the valence. So what that implies is we are going to rewrite this equation right here to be milliosmoles 
per liter to be equal to milli equivalents per liter divided by valence times the number of species. So what we actually did is we substituted this expression right here into wherever millimoles per liter was in this equation. Now you don't need to go through all this process all the time. You can simply memorize this equation and that should be sufficient. Now that we've done this, what we need to determine is the valence, the number of species and the number of milli equivalents that is present in a liter of solution. So we're going to start off with the valence and number of species. And what we have here is potassium gluconate. Now potassium gluconate is C6H11KO7. When you put this in water, it's going to dissociate into the potassium cation and everything else in there is going to be the anion. So you're going to have C6H11O7 minus. And now for number of species, it's one potassium cation and the gluconate anion. So number of species is going to be equal to two. In terms of valence, your valence is the absolute of either the charge on the cation or the charge on the anion. And so in either case, your valence is going to be equal to one. So now the only thing left is to determine the milli equivalents in a liter. From the question, we know that you have 2.5 milli equivalents in 100 milliliters. So that implies that you have 2.5 milli equivalents of potassium gluconate in 100 milliliters. We want to determine the amount in a liter. So that would be equal to some quantity of milli equivalents in a liter. Now a liter is 1,000 milliliters. So we can go ahead and solve for x, which is the unknown. x is going to be equal to 2.5 MEQ times a thousand milliliters divided by 100 milliliters now the milliliters cancels out the zeros cancel out and you end up with 25 milli equivalents of potassium gluconate per liter of solution so now we're going to substitute all this information back into this equation right here and that would imply that your osmolar strength or osmolarity is going to be equal to milliosmoles per liter being equal to the milli equivalents per liter which we determine to be 25 divided by the valence which is 1 times the number of species which we determine to be 2 and so the answer is going to be equal to 50. This question says calculate the osmolarity of a parental solution with a reported osmolality of 320 milliosmoles per kilogram having a density of 1.0054 kilograms per liter at room temperature. Round to the nearest tenth, do not include units. So in this question, the goal is to calculate the osmolality of the parental solution. But notice that in the question you've been given osmolality. Now, the difference between osmolality and osmolarity is that osmolality is milliosmoles per kilogram and osmolarity is milliosmoles per liter. So what we essentially need to do is move from a dimension of milliosmoles per kilogram to milliosmoles per liter. And so an elegant and fast way to actually solve this question is to use dimension analysis. And the way we'll do that is to start off with the osmolality, which is 320 milliosmoles per kilogram. So that would imply that you have 320 milliosmoles per kilogram. And then we can multiply this by the density, which has been given as 1.0054 kilograms per liter. Now the kilograms cancel out and now you're in units of milliosmoles per liter. So we're going to multiply the 320 milliosmoles by the 1.0054 and now that's going to be equal to 321.73 milliosmoles per liter. Now the question says round to the nearest 10 do not include units and so the answer is going to be equal to 321.7. So I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you did, be sure to like it and share it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you'd like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. My job here is done but yours has just begun. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.